So we need to get a meterpreter shell. Right, which we should be able to if we we should be able to put a shell on here through Evil Win RM. Uh, I'm looking at interpreter or amoeba man. You will get a interpreter beacon later in the task to key log the user, then you can download. Okay. I think we could also get a interpreter shell, like if we just created a payload and then uploaded it with our evil win RM and then connected it back to our attack machine would be a way to get a interpreter shell. At least in my head it works. Let's go ahead and keep reading though. System is sometimes too privileged. Meterpreter has a built-in keylogger. This will be useful for extracting the user's keystrokes. However, we can't just start this keylogger and hope for the best since our shell is currently running in the system context. System won't be typing any keystrokes, so this won't help us. To capture the correct user's creds, we will need to ensure that our shell is running in the context of that user, and we have Trevor's um, hash. I think I could evil win RM as Trevor.local. Uh, fortunately, Meterpreter provides us with a migrate feature, and since we are running as system, we should be able to migrate to any process. You have remote code execution on THM Server 1. Use this to get a Meterpreter shell. Okay, that's what I was thinking. If you need a recap on using Meterpreter and Metasploit, here's a module on its use. However, for a quick rundown, you can use the following command to generate a PowerShell Meterpreter payload. Okay, I did have the right thinking. And then you can use this command to create the associated listener in the MSF console. Okay, let's go ahead and let, let's try to do this on our own. Like we have those steps there. Uh, just for learning purposes. And we have this, so let's go ahead and do that command. And let me walk you guys through this for my own benefit, but also for you. We're running MSF Venom. Dash P is specifying the payload. We want to get a interpreter shell. Reverse TCP is just kind of standard so that we can listen via TCP. Our L host is going to be exploit AD, which actually should work. And I want to show you guys why. If we do IPA, you'll notice that our IP here is on this exploit AD interface. So when we specify exploit AD, it's, it's automatically grabbing our IP there. Now we do need to specify a listening port. The standard often is something like 4444. Now you probably shouldn't do that in a legit security assessment because like that's auto blocked by most firewalls because it's the standard for Metasploit. It always puts it in there, but for our purposes, we can do it. I'm pretty sure Windows Defender is not running on these boxes. And we're gonna create a file called shell.ps1. I'm gonna call mine hacksmarter.ps1. Actually, let's do it. Hack. Learn this in, from Nate. Like, put your the your port number in your shell, <laughs> just in case you have to use it again. You know what port you ran it on. So we'll call it hack four 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 dot ps one. And an amoeba man said, "There's other ways you could do this, such as in packets SMB server." Okay, we could even try that route. We'll see how this works. Let's do that. And then we need to set up a listener, which I saw, I saw the shortcut here. And I just learned about this the other day, right? So usually I type MSF console, I wait for it to load, then I hit use. Well, you can, you can bypass all that with this dash Q dash X. And then we're setting our payload, set L host exploit AD, set L port, listening port, and then exploit. So it's just running all of that together. You have to do sudo if you're not logged in as root, but we're logged in as root. Our payload is created. You'll see that there. So there's a few different things we're gonna have to do here to get this to work. Let's change this to shell two real quick. What we're gonna end up doing in this one is running a, a web server because we'll have to grab it from our victim machine. So python 3.m HTTP server will do port 80 just for ease of, is it already? One. Okay, we'll do 8080. Okay, we got that. And then we're gonna switch over to root. And we have to set a few things here, namely our listening port. I don't think this, no, maybe that does need to be there. No, let me look at these parentheses real quick. MSF console, we have all that in parentheses.
Maybe it's supposed to be like that. Let's try how it says. Nope, I didn't think so. Oh, maybe it worked. No, I don't think it did. Oh, it just we're just missing the... I think this parentheses needs to match. Not parentheses, freaking quotation mark. It's too late, y'all. Needs to match. Oh, did it work? Oh, kind of. Nope, that's not what I meant to do. Options. So, we have our L host, our L port. Now it's just wrong. There we go. We got that thing running. We got our web server going right there on port 8080. And we called it hack. Gosh, I forgot what I called my, my shell file. Hack 4444. And Amoeba Man, this is a very interesting problem if you think about it. You could become the Trevor.local user but that does not really help you to progress since you still don't know the password they use on KeePass. Hence, you need to keylog the user and wait for it. Think about some web applications like a banking portal. Yeah. Interesting. You could have compromised a DA if the creds are stored in the creds database. You will have to keylog the user to get them. Or you could impersonate the user and steal active browser cookies to the website. But what it shows is you can own the full domain and still have a blocker against reaching your goal that you need to solve. Very interesting. That is a good point. Very good, very interesting stuff. Uh, Hack444.ps1. Well, let's see if we can even get our keylogger kicked off. So if we do cert util going off memory dash cert util URL cache dash F. I might be totally screwing this up. I might have to go go look at the syntax real quick. Here's our IP. Let's copy that. 8080 hack. What did I call it? Hack 4444.ps1. Did I have the syntax right off memory? Maybe I did. No, I didn't. I might have to specify an out file. Maybe output. No, that didn't work. Let's look at the syntax. I think it was over here. Cert URL cache. Oh, split. Split. Why split? I've never seen that before. Maybe it explains it. I, I never use split. Maybe that's what I'm doing wrong often. digging that later but I bet this would work so you can host him interpreter using a Python web server we did it copy it with something URL cache I'm trying to think how I usually do it URL cache I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing wrong on my own syntax do I have it here Um, cert util URL cache dash F. Oh, you don't have to do dash. Oh, you just specify the name that you're saving it there. That's what I'm doing wrong on my end. Okay, let's try that again. So, 
should just be able to go like this. I bet that'll work. Yep, that's all I was doing wrong. Cool. Cool, cool. Let's make sure we have our interpreter running there. And now we should, in theory, be able to run that. Look at that, my friends. Oh, it's slow. There we go. 